Hi everyone, I'm Anya Parampil and this is Red Lines. A new report by a special mission of the United Nations Human Rights Council was released this week and is making headlines after it accused Venezuela's government of crimes against humanity. Because it is getting so much attention, several people have reached out to me asking for clarification regarding the information and allegations presented in the report, so I thought I'd help provide some context. The first point to understand about this report is that none of its authors set foot in Venezuela in order to produce it. The Office of the High Commissioner of the UN Human Rights Council, Michelle Bachelet, did not author this report. Venezuela's government has worked with Bachelet since September of 2018 when the council passed a resolution instructing the High Commissioner to produce a comprehensive report on the human rights situation in the country. Bachelet has actually visited Venezuela and met with government officials in order to collect her information. This report had nothing to do with that investigation. Instead, it was issued by a special mission created by the Council after the right-wing governments compromising the pro-U.S. Lima Group proposed its creation. Their resolution passed with the approval of a mere 19 out of the UNHRC's 47 member states. The initiative came as a clear attempt to undermine Venezuela's official cooperation with the UNHRC and as part of an effort to distract from the massive protests that were sweeping Lima Group member states in 2019. And before I get into the report's content, it's worth taking a look at the background at one of the individuals tabbed to investigate human rights in Venezuela, Francisco Cox. Cox is a Chilean lawyer who has previously represented functionaries of Chile's military dictatorship led by Augusto Pinochet between the years 1973 and 1990. I asked sociologist Esteban Silva, leader of El Movimiento del Socialismo Allendista, what qualifies Mr. Cox to investigate human rights. Francisco Cox Vial is not a lawyer who qualifies as an expert in human rights. Writer, he's a part of an operation against the government of Venezuela. Cox was a lawyer for an important political leader of the dictator Pinochet, Mr. Jovino Novoa. In 2019, was a lawyer for the former Minister of Education who was accused in a political trial in Congress, and who is also the wife of the current Minister of Foreign Affairs, Andres Alaman. The world watched as the people of Chile rose up in opposition to the government of Sebastián Piñera in 2019, and witnessed security forces crack down on demonstrators with total impunity. The police were even accused of systematically targeting protesters by shooting them in the eye. At the time, Cox said President Piñera bore no responsibility for the violence. Appointing an ethically dubious, hyper-partisan defender of junta leaders, such as Cox, to investigate the human rights record of a left-wing government is basically the equivalent of hiring O.J. Simpson to lead couples therapy seminars. But that didn't stop the UN. So what exactly did Cox and company put in their report? authored from abroad, accusing Venezuela of titanic human rights crimes? First, they made broad accusations of torture, largely based on testimony provided by the former head of Venezuela's National Intelligence Services, or Sabine, a man named Manuel Christopher Figuera. Figuera ran Sabine up until April of 2019 when he defected to the United States after participating in opposition leader Juan Guaido's failed military insurrection. Following the coup, Figuera fled to Colombia and then to the United States. In return for his cooperation with Washington, the U.S. Treasury Department lifted sanctions it had previously placed on Figuera immediately following his defection. Many Venezuelan officials targeted by U.S. sanctions are not directly impacted by the measures, since they don't have bank accounts in the United States to begin with. 
However, Figuera's wife was in the United States in the lead up to his defection, suggesting he may have been a bit more susceptible to financial bullying from Washington. So Figuera participates in a botched military coup in Venezuela, defects to the United States, is rewarded by Washington, and then goes on to supply important testimony supporting the U.S. narrative on Venezuela in the following months? Is he truly a trustworthy source? Oh, and let's not forget that the allegations of torture he presents focus on cases which took place between the years 2014 and 2018, conveniently ending when Figuera himself took over Sabine. Just to recap, so far we have a pro-Pinochet lawyer authoring a report based largely on testimony from an individual who was financially coerced into collaborating with Washington to overthrow Venezuela's government. But let's examine some of the allegations of torture more closely. Specifically, the reports charge that Venezuela's treatment of opposition leader Leopoldo Lopez constitutes torture and cruel and inhuman punishment. Lopez is currently serving time for encouraging and directing violent protests aimed at toppling Venezuela's elected government. Yet Lopez currently lives under house arrest at home with his family. Even when he was in detention, he was allowed visits with his loved ones. While under house arrest, Lopez has openly encouraged acts of violence to overthrow Venezuela's government. He even worked with Guaido and other U.S.-backed oppositionists to topple the government. In April 2019, he was broken out of his home during that failed military uprising led by Guaido, which he helped to initiate, thanks to cooperation from Manuel Figuera. Can you imagine anyone in the United States getting away with such actions? If only WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange were allowed such comfortable conditions. But I digress. As absurd as the allegations of Lopez's torture are, perhaps nothing in the report is as insanely dishonest as its treatment of the case of Oscar Perez. You might remember Perez from that time he stole a government helicopter in Caracas and attempted to fly it into the country's Supreme Court while firing grenades at Venezuelan government institutions. Despite the gravity of his crime, Perez was only killed six months later during a raid in which he and his collaborators fired upon police, killing at least two. They were found with heavy weapons and explosives. According to Cox's report, Perez's death amounts to an extrajudicial killing, and his only actions were to commandeer a helicopter and fly it over the Supreme Court in an attack. Yeah, leaving out just a few details there, like the part about embalming government buildings. And again, imagine how this scenario would have played out in the United States. Now, I'm not trying to argue that every aspect of the report was completely fabricated. In fact, Venezuela's government has responded by saying it's investigated many of the cases presented in the report and punished individuals responsible for the crimes. Those details just simply weren't reflected in the document. But the fact this report had to highlight the cases of Lopez and Perez tells you how desperate Cox and company, and by extension, the United States and its allies, are to charge Venezuela's government with wrongdoing. Why is that? Well, just days after the report's publication, opposition leader Juan Guaido gave an unusual speech billed as an address before the United Nations General Assembly, which was actually just a Zoom call live-streamed on his YouTube channel. During the phony UN address, he called on the international community to invoke its responsibility to protect Venezuelans and contemplate scenarios after all routes have been exhausted. To make his case for war, Guaido referenced the UN's recent findings. Hemos logrado enfocar la atención del mundo en la violación de derechos humanos en Venezuela y comisión de crímenes de lesa humanidad por parte del régimen en Venezuela. Apenas la semana pasada, la misión independiente de verificación de hechos del Consejo de Derechos Humanos de esta organización publica un reporte y un informe detallado que constata la responsabilidad individual de Nicolás Maduro en la Comisión de Crímenes de Lesa Humanidad y corrobora lo que por años hemos estado alertando a la comunidad internacional. En Venezuela se ataca 
de manera sistemática y amplia a la población civil por motivos políticos. Y el responsable detrás de estos crímenes no es otro, es Nicolás Maduro. Guaido was openly calling for direct military intervention in Venezuela under the guise of humanitarian assistance. Because from Iraq to Libya to Syria, that's worked out so well in recent history. There's really no better way to restore democracy than for the U.S. Air Force to bomb the crap out of your country's capital, right? So this UN report is simply a propaganda tool generated by the U.S. and its allies to justify the potential military invasion of Venezuela. If the nations responsible for producing it truly cared about the well-being of Venezuelans, they could have called for an end to sanctions and outside interference targeting their country. But they're not actually interested in human rights, unless they can be weaponized to secure them the power they are unable to earn at the ballot box.